Well, hello boys and girls. Welcome back to Mimi's Fun Time. Today we are going to read a book called Down Down the Mountain. Down Down the Mountain. Once upon a time, in a little log cabin away up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, there lived a little girl named Hetty and her brother Hank. <clears throat> Although their home was a small one, it was a cozy place to live. There was a big stone fireplace at one end. <clears throat> that was where Mammy cooked beans and cornmeal mush and fried pork in a big black frying pan. There was a big bed in one corner <clears throat> and a little bed in the other corner. And in the middle of the room, there was a big long table made of planks. That was where Mammy and Pappy and Hetty and Hank ate their dinner every day. All kinds of things hung from the rafters, strings of shucky beans, Bunches of bright red peppers, ears of popcorn all tied together, hams and sausages and baskets full of this and that. Never in all their lives had Hetty or Hank had a pair of shoes. In the summer, it was fun to run around barefoot, but when winter came, and the snow lay on the mountains like a chilly white blanket. Their little feet were blue with cold, and they longed for a pair of shoes. They each wanted a beautiful shining pair that sang creaky squeaky, creaky squeaky every time they walked. They begged their mammy to buy them some shoes, but she said, you can't find shoes like that in these hills. Such shining shoes come from the town away down down at the foot of the mountain. So they asked their pappy, but he said, There's not a cent of money in this household. We've everything we need right here in these hills. Hetty and Hank felt very sad, but they did not give up. Let's ask Grammy, said Hetty, and they did. Some shining shoes, chirped Grammy. I'll tell you how you can get them yourselves. How? How? cried Hetty and Hank. Plant some turnip seeds, she said, and when they have grown into fine big turnips, you can take them all the way down to town and trade them off for some shiny, creaky, squeaky shoes. Thank you, ma'am. That's what we'll do, cried Hank and Hetty. They raced away and planted some turnip seeds in the tilted field right next to Pappy's corn patch. Home they were singing. Our fields are high up in the air. We wouldn't dare plant pumpkins there. For pumpkins grow so big and round, they'll break right off and tumble down. But turnips grow on hills or vales because they twist their little tails around the rocks and hold on tight and don't let go for day or night. When Hetty and Hank got home, it was dark. The whippoorwills were calling Sally from the deep woods. Whippoorwill, whippoorwill. And a little owl was asking, who? Who? Mammy was waiting for them. She gave them a nice supper of cornbread and butter and yellow honey. Then she tucked them snugly into bed. They dreamed all night about shining shoes that played a creaky, squeaky tune, just like Pappy's fiddle. The next day, they climbed up the steep, steep mountainside to see if the turnip seeds had come up, but they had not, and Hetty and Hank had to wait and wait and wait 
before they spied the baby turnip leaves peeping out of the ground. Then there was plenty of work for Hetty and Hank. They had to chop away the weeds each day and chase away the worms and the bugs and the grasshoppers that came for the taste of the nice green turnip leaves. When there was no rain and the little turnips felt dry and thirsty, Hetty and Hank had to bring big buckets of water to make them fresh and green again. The little turnips were very grateful. They grew and grew until they were the finest and the biggest turnips to be found anywhere in the hill country. Then Hetty and Hank brought Grammy and Mammy and Pappy up to see them. Sakes alive, cried Mammy. I never saw such big turnips. Yes, sirree, smiled Grammy. These are mighty juicy turnips and they'll fetch a fine price in the town, said Pappy. Hetty and Hank shall have the old gray horse to take them down the mountain. So Hank quickly brought the gray horse. Then they pulled up all the beautiful turnips and packed them into a big bag. Pappy laid the bag proudly across the gray horse's back. Then he gave Hetty and Hank a boost and settled them safely right behind the turnips. Now they were ready to go. It's no trouble to find the town, said Grammy. Just you keep to the road and it will lead you down. Sometimes it's steep, just like the stair. Sometimes it's narrow, like a hair. It turns and twists and winds around, but at the end you'll find the town. We'll keep to the road, promised Hetty and Hank. Hank pulled on the reins. Hetty gave the gray horse a slap on the side and they were off. Goodbye, cried Grammy and Mammy and Pappy. Goodbye, <clears throat> waved Hetty and Hank. And away they went, clippity-cloppity down the road to town. They had not gone very far before they came to an old man cutting sugar cane in a field beside the road. Howdy, young ones, he called. What have you in that big bag? Some turnips were taken to sell in the town, said Hank proudly. Oh my, turnips, cried the old man. How I love some nice juicy turnips for my dinner. Couldn't you spare me just a few? I suppose we wouldn't miss just a few, said Hetty, and she gave him some. On they jogged between great bushes of pink mountain laurel, and after a while, they came to an old woman who was making soap in a big black kettle. Howdy, children, she called. What have you in that big bag? Some turnips were taken down to town, said Hank. Turnips, cried the old woman. Mercy me, how I'd love just a taste of turnip for my dinner. Couldn't you spare me just two? One for my old man and one for me? I suppose we wouldn't miss just two, said Hetty, and she gave her two big ones. Down, down, down they went between the rows of tall blue mountains. Down, 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 until they came to a little stream flowing over the rocks. There the little row ended. They looked here, they looked there, they looked everywhere, but it was nowhere to be seen. But just then along came a woman on horseback, splishing and splashing right down the middle of the stream. What's the matter, young ones, she called. We've lost a little road to town, said Hank. Follow the creek, said the woman. That's all the road there is in these parts. So Hetty and Hank went splashing along and along, and pretty soon they spied the little road leading up from the water. They said goodbye to the kind woman and gave her a bunch of turnips for her dinner. On they went along the little road beneath the tall pine trees. After a while, they overtook a man who was driving a flock of turkeys down to town. Howdy, greeted the man. What have you in that big bag? Some turnips were taken to sell in the town, 
said Hank. Oh, my stars, said the man. Turnips? And I've had nary a bit to eat since break of dawn. A nice juicy turnip would taste mighty good now, for I've been running after these turkeys till I'm not worn out. Well, we'll have to give him a handful of turnips, said Hetty, and she did. Thank you, thank you, said the man. You're kind and generous, young ones. Now they were very near to town, they could look down and see the rooftops in the valley. The little road became so smooth and straight that the great horse broke into a gallop. Here's the town, cried Hank. Along they went. Clippity-clop, clippity-clop, past the schoolhouse, past the church, past the courthouse, and suddenly there was the little red store. Whoa! cried Hank, pulling on the reins. Here's the place to trade our turnips off for some shining shoes. They climbed down and lifted off the sack. Somehow, it felt very light and very, very empty. Had they given all the turnips away? Hattie put her hand to the bag and brought out one large, fat, lonesome turnip it was the only one left. And there, shining through the store, the store windows were those beautiful, creaky, squeaky, shining shoes. Hetty and Hank gazed at them longingly, but one turnip would not buy a pair of shoes. Two big tears began to roll down Hetty's cheeks. <clears throat> there, there said Hank. No use crying. We'll just walk around and see the sights. Come on. <clears throat> so they walked along the little road, looking this way and that way. They saw the big covered wagons, all loaded with apples, come rumbling down from the hills. They saw the men trading horses in the courthouse square. Then a train went thundering past, and they watched it with round eyes. Along and along they went, and after a while they came to a field where there were many, many people. A big sign over the gate said, County Fair. Hetty and Hank went hustling and bustling about in the crowd. Pretty soon they came to a long row of tables, each one groaning with a different kind of vegetable. There were tomatoes on this one and beans on that one, and pumpkins on the other one. Oh, here are some turnips, cried Hetty. Are they as big as ours? asked Hank. Hetty held up her turnip. It seems larger and juicier than the rest. Howdy, young ones, said the old man who was looking at the turnip. Do you want to enter that turnip in the contest? What contest, asked Hank. Why, there's a prize offered for the finest turnip at the fair, replied the old man. Mercy me, said Hetty, let's try it. You bet your life, said Hank. So the old man wrote their names on a tag and tied it to the fat turnip. Then he laid it carefully among all the other turnips. You are just in the nick of time, he said, for I was just a getting ready to do the judging. He began to examine the turnips. He weighed each one to see how heavy it was. He felt each one to see how firm it was. And when he had tried them all, he held one large turnip high above his head. Folks, he cried, here's the finest turnip at the fair. It belongs to a little girl and a little boy. Hetty and Hank listened with all their ears. Come forward, young ones, and receive the prize. Hetty held out her hand, and the shining up at her was a bright five-dollar gold piece. Oh, thank you, sir, cried Hetty and Hank. Now we can buy our shining shoes. They dashed along past the beans and tomatoes, 
They ran past the squash and skipped past the potatoes. They dodged through the hustle and the bustle on the fairgrounds. They raced along the street until they came to the little red store. The storekeeper was standing behind the counter. We want to buy some beautiful creaky squeaky shoes, said Hank, all out of breath. The storekeeper got down his brightest shoes and Hetty and Hank each chose a pair that played a squeaky, squeaky, squeaky tune. Then they bought some gifts to take home with them. A yellow hat for Pappy, <coughs> a bright sash for Mammy, and a big red handkerchief and a package of needles for Granny. And off they started on the long trip home up, up, up they wound round and round the mountain, past the pink laurel flowers, along the little stream, and underneath the tall pine trees. After a long, long climb, they reached their own little cabin. There sat Mammy and Pappy and Grammy waiting on the porch. How pleased they were to see Hetty and Hank and all the new things they had brought. The next day it was Sunday, so they put on their beautiful things and went to preaching. Hetty and Hank walked proudly into the meeting house. Their shoes were playing such a creaky, squeaky tune that all the people craned their necks to see who could be wearing such beautiful shoes. The end. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to catch you next time on another book reading. And I'm glad that y'all came to hear this little story. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.